Thank you for joining us for another power-packed message provided by Monroe Global Incorporated and MonroeGlobal.com. We transform followers into leaders and leaders into agents of change. We hope that this message is a blessing to you as you advance your life and discover your purpose. Now, let's go into the message. We are learning as we are going through this series on the kingdom that the kingdom functions on keys. And Jesus was very clear that these keys are to be learned. He wants us to have them. And he says that the key to them is really knowledge. The secret of the kingdom keys is knowledge. It's what you know, according to him, that will give you the power to function in the kingdom of God. I want to begin with Luke chapter 18 in this session, verse 23. Luke 18, verse 23. And these words are written there. It says, and when he heard this, speaking of the rich young man that we talked about in our last session, he became very sad because he was a man of great wealth. And Jesus looked at him and said, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. Indeed, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Three things I want you to write down from this verse. Verse number one, he did not say it is impossible for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. He didn't say it was impossible. Number two, a needle is not an instrument for sewing. That term needle there is referring to a contraption built to clean camels. It was two posts that was put together through which camels were squeezed so they could be stuck, so they could clean them and so they could wash them down. So it was like a, like a, 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 a camel garage. And you would push the camel between the two posts, you would shave them and clean them, and then when you were finished, you would force them through to get all the dirt and everything off and that was called a needle in the day of Jesus. So a needle is created for camels and camels are, are designed to go through it or they're designed for camels to go through them except it's very difficult intentionally for the camels. All right, and thirdly, Jesus said it was hard for the rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, I think what's important here is that he didn't say it was hard for a rich person to stay in it. And I want to pause there. <laughs> because when you get into the kingdom and you start functioning properly, you, you inevitably become prosperous. So prosperity is a natural product of kingdom living it's a natural product so it's impossible for you to be in the kingdom of God and live effectively in it and stay poor so what's important here is two rich people there's rich before kingdom and then there's rich after kingdom so if you are rich before you enter the kingdom of God he says that in some cases makes it difficult for you to enter. Why? Because the, the keys or the principles, the, the systems of the kingdom are contrary or opposite to the systems in the world from where you got your riches. For example, uh, you remember Abraham. Abraham was a very wealthy man after he followed God. Now this is important because you remember one time there was a king who wanted to give Abraham some money. You remember that? You can take the child out for a minute please. Uh, we're taping for TV. I appreciate that. Uh, and so it's very important uh, for you to understand that Abraham was offered a lot of money by this king. That was a worldly way of getting wealth. Matter of fact, the king was really trying to set Abraham up for manipulation. See, if you give somebody money and you make them rich, then they got to do what you say. So it was not kingdom wealth. 
It was political favor he was offering Abraham. Abraham knew it. Abraham said, now if I get rich this way, this man will forever be able to control me. So Abraham's response to the man was, I will not retake any of your wealth, least when I become wealthy, he says, you will say you made me rich. Now, listen to Abraham's thinking. I will become wealthy. Yes. Glory, hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, me too. See, once you understand the kingdom living, which Abraham caught on to, it was, look, if, if I go with God, I inevitably will become wealthy. But Abraham was able to distinguish between worldly system for wealth and kingdom system for wealth, and he made a decision. Now, let's be honest. That was hard for him. No, if he was a Bahamian, that was hard. See, the word hard is important there. Because here you are, you left your town, left your family, left your father's house in Ur. Here you are in a place where you don't know, and you go into a place where you don't know, and you broke. Your servants were good warriors, and they were able to, to fight as mercenaries for a little city. And this city appreciates what they did so much that the city offers you a lot of wealth. Legitimately so, because your soldiers fought for them. So you would think that if a man offered you $60 million, just as a gift, um, what would you say? Oh, not really, you know. Uh, 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 jolly well, old chap, you could keep that, you know. I, I'm just fine, you know. <laughs> the behaviors don't need anything. You, we're just fine. You wouldn't say that. <laughs> for, for you would say, let me pray about it. Thank you, Lord. I prayed already. <laughs> it's a very important chapter. Because Abraham was tested with regards to what system he would live on. It was hard for him to say no, but he said it. When Abraham became wealthy, the Bible says what? He became the wealthiest man in the entire Mesopotamia Valley. He became richer than the guy who tried to offer him money later. Now, Abraham learned the system of the kingdom. So, Jesus said, when a person, and this is the point I want you to get tonight, when a person has been living a certain way outside the kingdom for a long time, living their lives on the other kingdom system, he says it is difficult for them to enter the groove of the system of the kingdom. That's why churches spend hours raising offerings. Because the taking of an offering in a church is not really a kingdom experience for the people. It's a worldly experience for them because they are still thinking from the world system. If I pay 10% of my money, I am losing 10%. That's a worldly thought. In other words, whatever leaves my hands, leaves my life. That's a worldly thought. So if you want to keep something in your life, you got to keep it in your hands. That's a worldly thought. Now when you come into the kingdom of God, which you claim to be in, the kingdom says, look now, if you're going to function in this kingdom, if you want to unlock the heavens and have a window open that stuff will come out that you can't contain, well, what you do is you got to unlock the window by giving it away. Oh. And so, uh, Pastor Richard stands up and he says, it's time to give. And the Christian, the religious Christian here, it's time to rip me off. <laughs> that what you hear in your mind. Yeah, because that's the world system. Okay, so, Instead of paying your tithe, you pay a tithe of your tithe. 
whatever that is. I don't know how you do that, but people do it all the time. You're supposed to give a hundred dollars. I made a thousand. I'm supposed to give a hundred, but man, hundred too much, man. And for BF, I'm giving fifty. That's plenty, hey God. God said, No, you're teething. But fifty look big compared to the person next to you giving twenty. You see, you feel like you're really doing something, but you're really locking up heaven. And whatever you lock on, earth shall be locked in heaven. So heaven says, well, nothing coming to you. In the kingdom of heaven now, you see, uh, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven in the kingdom of heaven. So either you've got to decide to live in one kingdom or the other, otherwise you're going to frustrate yourself. So Christ says, it is hard, because this rich man couldn't understand. He said, look, I earn my money laboring hard, probably ripping people off and playing, you know, lottery and whatever he does. He says, and now you're going to tell me that to live in your kingdom, I got to give it all away to the poor? Christ says, that's the way it works in this kingdom. Then the guy says, what? That's totally unreasonable. So Christ says, it's very hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Now, let's explain enter. I was looking this up in the, in the Greek language. What did you all do to me? I didn't do a thing, praise God. Did I do something? Oh, I did something on this? Okay, she'll fix it. Yeah. Uh, the word enter is an incredible word. Because the word enter has two definitions in the Greek language. Write the word enter down. This word enter is interesting. The word enter means to come into something, but it also means to explore. Explore. This is very interesting. It says, it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. When Christ says that, that, that we must enter the kingdom, there is an act of getting into the house, but then there's a different enter uh, where you explore the rooms of the house. So you can enter the house, but never enter the rooms. So one is an act of getting in, the other one is an act of exploring all of the various rooms in the kingdom of God. So we find then this, uh, uh, where my, my folder, can I get my folder please? My capable folder. Oh, I think you must have left my folder, my assistant. Are you having a problem? She's looking for power. There's, there's a key to this thing that she doesn't know. There's a key. Now, I'm going to show you how the system works. You see, she, she's completely baffled. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You hear the light came on? Oh, yeah. It's what you call repowering. Ta-da. See, I have the knowledge of the secrets of the compact presario. <laughs> Do you know why? Because it is mine. He says, it's being given unto you to know the secrets. So she could have been there for the last five hours trying to figure that out and didn't have the knowledge of the secrets. That's how most Christians are living, religious people. They're trying to get healed, trying to get blessed, trying to do stuff, trying, trying, and it ain't working. Because you see, if you don't know the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God, then it can't work. Now, here's what I want you to, to get. When he said it's hard for the rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven, he was talking about not just getting in, but exploring it. Why? Because if he couldn't handle the first command, everybody get that? The first one was what? Sell all you have, give it to the poor. And that was only one key. The fellow said, well, that's a crazy kingdom. Everything I work for all my life, you say, give it away. He says, yes, that's how the kingdom works. We even didn't get to all the other stuff, all the other keys. So the Bible says he left and he was very sorrowful. He was very depressed. And uh, 
What did you do? Is the plug in? No, that there. No, it's not. See, the light's off. See, now it's on. You see that there? Your foot is on the cord. See, there's a process. There's a key. My foot is on the cord. See? Now it's on. Now don't touch it. Now we should be okay. After we find out what you did. These guys are good. Don't, don't, don't laugh. She, she was doing so good until you all laughed. Huh? Don't, don't, don't laugh at people because you can't do it any better than that. Yeah, now it's booting up again. See, it's called reboot. I deep it. I know what I do. It's still right there. Don't laugh at me, Linda. You don't know what you're doing either. Huh? Say what? I get it. Oh, I, I know how to do it. It's just that it happens in the strangest time. It's like the devil gets in, you know, certain things. And, and didn't get in me tonight. I'm sure it wasn't the devil. Well, you see, the devil hates this teaching because it's going to mess him up. So I don't blame him. If I was him, I had to interrupt me too. Isn't that strange? He that dwells in the oh, there it is, it works. All right, praise God. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will serve the Lord. He is my refuge and my computer. He's the present up in the time of trouble. Oh, you saw it working there. Yeah, it works. See? Give me a hand, man. Let's get stuff. Thank you very much. I got my printed notes too. You know me, I'm always equipped. So the devil in trouble twice. Yeah, all right. So let's take a look now at another verse of scripture. And that is uh, the one that follows that. And Luke chapter, let me get my notes here. Luke chapter 8. Let's go back to Luke chapter 8 verse 9. Luke chapter 8 verse 9. Everybody has it? Okay, take a look at uh, verse Luke 8, verse 9. His disciples asked him what this parable meant. He said, The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but to others I speak in parables so that those seeing they may not see and though hearing they may not understand okay now you may have been wondering and i know that you probably uh, need to wonder why jesus said to them he doesn't want them to understand let's take another look at another verse uh, No, I better explain that first. This morning, you remember scripture, he says, so that seeing they may not, they may, they not see. Uh, he says, least they believe. Okay, I got to explain why he speaks to them in parables and why he says he speaks to us plainly. And this is very difficult to understand, but you got to listen carefully. A parable is a, a story that hides the truth so the purpose for a parable is to make sure that you don't get the truth how's that for a mystery the word parable means story but a parable is a story that that tells you the truth but it's hidden and Jesus only spoke 
to the multitudes in parables. That's what he did. You can open this up now. You okay now, right? Yeah, just don't touch that plug. You could kill all of that for me? You know how to get rid of all of that for me? Okay, good. Let's cancel all that and then go to the... Good. Uh, now, a parable, when I, when I first... You could pull off the screen so you don't be distracted. Good. You're so sharp. A parable, when I first studied a parable, I was in, at an R. Roberts University, and uh, we, we went through a professor, uh, Dr. Jerry Horner, took us through the, 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 the Greek and all this stuff, and I was sitting there thinking, well, I was dumb. When he was finished, I realized I was really dumb because I didn't figure out why Christ only taught in parables to the, to the public. And here's what a parable is for. A parable is to make sure that you don't understand truth, but you discover it. Now, here's why. God doesn't want you to learn anything you don't want to know. Can you write that down somewhere? It's a very strange thing about a parable. In other words, God hides from you what you don't want to find. It gets deep here. So Christ says, it is only given to you. Who are you? These 12 guys who he said, come and follow me, and they did. They forsook their family, their family, their business, their parents. They forsook everything, and they followed him. He says, now because you want to know, I'm going to tell you. In other words, what you don't want to know, God keeps to himself. Now, let me explain why it's that way. Listen carefully. Very interesting. The reason why God hides the truth in parables to them, who's them? Them folks who are outside, okay, we read it a few times in the passages, is because God is too holy to give them what they didn't ask for. Oh boy. I explain this. Okay, to be holy means to be pure, but it means pure in motive. Which means God is holy. That means God is integrated. He's one with himself. It means that God has integrity. Which means that God cannot lie. That's why the Bible says it right away. God cannot lie. Why? You cannot be holy and lie. Amen. Holy means that you are pure in motive. Please listen to what I'm saying. Because this is the secret to the keys being discovered. He said, so because I'm holy, I cannot pretend. You'll write this stuff down, man. This is heavy stuff. Heavy stuff I'm teaching right now. I wish I was teaching this to myself. <laughs> to be holy means what? To be pure on motive. To have pure motive means you cannot pretend. Which means that you cannot lie to yourself. So, if I pretend that you want a glass of water, and I give it to you, I lied. To who? Myself. Because... My motive is not pure. Because you didn't ask me for water. Yeah. You'll get it. Someone get it. So I cannot give you a glass of water if you don't believe you need it. Because if I give it to you and you don't need it, then I am pretending you need it. Which means my motive is not pure, which means I am lying. This gets heavy. So so what I will do is I will I'm going to leave I'll leave a I'm trying to describe a parable I will leave a little map on the table with a directions to a well and I'll just leave it on your table and I'll go so that if somehow later you decide you need water I left you something See how tough it is? So he said, I cannot give them the keys of a kingdom they have no interest in. Jesus. So what I'll do is I will leave them maps, little 
hints so that if so one day they decide I need to change kingdoms I left them enough information Lord help my sin boy that's tough isn't it let me put it another way God says God says thank you love God says okay let me ask another question where's God in heaven where's his presence everywhere okay then why does God say you'll find me if and I, wait a minute is God hiding or something no, no? and yes <laughs> he's hiding to those who don't want to find him but he says you will find me when you seek me not just seek me casually but I'm gonna test your seeking even my God he said if you seek me with all your heart I'll let you find me is God hiding no he is too honest oh man it's tough to teach he's too holy he God cannot reveal himself to anyone who doesn't have an interest in him because he cannot lie he can't pretend you want him it's tough Boy, that's tough, huh? So you can only know what you want to know from God. Uh, let me give you another example. You remember the Beatitudes? Jesus' first public message. Beatitudes. You remember the first one? The first one sets the pace for all the rest. He says, blessed are the, are, are the poor in spirit. For theirs, only theirs, is the kingdom. Who? Only those who are poor in spirit. In other words, if you believe that you don't need God, you are right spiritually, God's in the kingdom made for you. But if you ever get to the point where you say, I am poor in spirit, I need God, I need spiritual help, I need spiritual revelation, I need help, help me. God says the kingdom comes to you. Anybody getting it now? Yes. So Christ says, the keys are not for everybody. Only those who want to open the doors. Could it be then? That's why so many religious people are starving, suffering, depressed, oppressed, sick, dying. Because they don't really have an interest in opening all them doors. They just want to go to heaven. Are you with me? In other words, I cannot teach you what you don't want to learn, Jesus says. The kingdom of God is the only kingdom where education depends on the student. I just gave you a key. A young man came to me yesterday in England. Day for yesterday, we finished in England. And uh, all these men were about a thousand men or so. And after I taught, the young man came to me. And he knelt down. And he said, bless me. So I said, with what? <laughs> he said, I want your anointing. I said, you got to give me something. He looked at me. He said, no, I want you to just bless me and transfer your anointing. I said, no, I can't do that. I said, that's, that's a religious act which never works. I'm giving you a key. You got to give me something. When you give me something, then what is on me comes on you. I said, that's the way the key of the kingdom works there. If you, if you want what a prophet has, Jesus says, give him something. Even a glass of water, just give him something. <laughs> now, I was so tempted to pray for the guy when he first asked me. Why? Because I was living in this old religious kingdom culture. I almost prayed for the Holy Ghost. said, don't you pray for him. Why? You are making him live a lie. Making him believe he got something he didn't get. So I said, you got to give me something. He said, but, you know, Mike Murdoch was here, and, 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 
You know, he lists all these big names and he got them to pray for him. I said, but you still ain't got what they got, right? I said, you got to give me something. I said, you know, I'm not looking for anything. I said, but if you want what I have, you got to give me something. I mean, could you imagine Elijah, a fat prophet, well fed, God sent him to a widow who had one last meal. <laughs> the man's fat, he don't need no, no food. He said, but the woman needs something and she got to give it to somebody. Give it to a man who's fat. Why, are you skinny? Come on, man, talk to me. If you want fatness, give the fatness. So when he came, he said, look, what do you have to eat? She says, all we got is two cakes. One for me, one for my son. We're going to die afterwards. He said, look, tell you what, uh, if you give me the cake first, what's on me going to come on your house? And when she gave him the cake, the stuff came on the house, and the meal barrel started running over, and he just, she started opening up meal barrel business. She started selling meal to the neighborhood. He gave her a key. So Jesus said, when a prophet comes to your town, and believe me, I am a good prophet. Amen. He said, when a prophet comes to your town, if he comes into your presence, anywhere, he said, don't just stand there looking at the guy. And don't just tell him, pray for you. Just give him something. He says, even if it's just a glass of water, once you give it to him, what you did? You unlocked something on earth. And when you do it, you did what? Unlock something in heaven. And now all of a sudden, that, 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 that little meeting you have with the prophet is over, you know. Just a few minutes, you gave him something, it's over. But heaven, Christ says, once it's open. Good Lord. That means wherever that prophet goes, if he goes to another town, and someone blesses him with a free house, that same anointing moves over where you was, and now you're dead free. Boom. In other words, once it's open, it never shuts up again unless you lock it. It's a secret. It's a secret. Now, could you imagine if Elijah lived in our day, and Elijah went to the woman house who was on welfare, Elisha driving in a Jaguar. <laughs> All of this now. See, two different kingdoms, eh? And he pulls up to that woman's hut and takes her last cake from her in his Jaguar. And, and Zedna saw that. <laughs> CNN, front page. Prophet rips off widow. Am I right? Yeah. Why? So Christ says it is hard. For CNN to enter the kingdom because the key doesn't make any sense to CNN. <laughs> you say, boy, it preaches the teeth from poor people. Let me tell you something. Uh, I used to think so myself until I figured out the key. Now, some preachers do teeth because they ain't got no anointing on them. <laughs> you know, you don't want to give to somebody who ain't got stuff you don't want. I mean, you know, you. you <laughs> I mean, if a guy, he ain't doing much, you don't want to give him much because you don't want little to come on your life. Come on, talk to me, man. <laughs> you know, use your brain. <laughs> so if you see somebody with an anointing that you want on your life, you give them something. So you meet a guy who preaching he broke? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> God bless you. When you get blessed, come back. <laughs> if it ain't working for you, I don't want it not work for me. Yeah. So Christ says what? He says, he speaks to them in parables so that they could discover the truth. Write this down, please. Nothing is yours until you discover it. And that's the way it works. Nothing is yours until you discover it. That means no matter what I know right now as a teacher, what I know is what I discovered. I can teach you this all my life, and it'll never affect you until you take what I taught you, sit down and say, Lord, I want to know what Pastor Miles knows. I want you to show me what he knows. Yes, 
The keys have been given to you, but not to them. How many of you want to discover all the keys? Let me see your hands. For that's a good decision. Say, Lord, I want to know how to enter and explore the entire kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. Ooh, I felt that prayer. Boy, he, he just got excited. Because if you want to know, he's going to show you. All right, let's wrap this up here. If we get this thing working here again, I promise you I ain't going to press the wrong button no more. Okay, here we go. All right. Here is why it was hard. Okay? Because the kingdom of God to most people is a mystery. So look at the first statement here. The opposite nature of the kingdom keys. It was hard for the young man to understand the kingdom because the the keys were opposite. In his kingdom, you get by taking. In the kingdom of God, you get by what? Giving. So he said, this is hard. Secondly, the power of ignorance of kingdom keys is what destroys us. Hosea 4 verse 6. Uh, my people perish because of what? Lack of knowledge. This, this rich young man did not know how to become richer because of ignorance. So he literally stayed with wealth that was killing him rather than entering wealth that could give him life. And I want to stress again that coming into the kingdom of God doesn't make you poor. John the Baptist sent Jesus a message in prison. And he told his disciples, ask Jesus if you are the Christ, the one that I told them would come. Christ sent a message back to John. He says, you please tell John, I am he, and here's the proof. And then he listed a number of things. The first one he listed, he says, tell John that the, the kingdom is being preached to the poor. Now, when I read that the first time, I was in Bain Town. That means I wasn't doing too well. So when I read that, I was confused. I said, wait a minute. Jesus said that one of the signs of his being the Messiah is the fact that he is preaching to the poor the kingdom. And he's supposed to be the solution to all of our problems. Which means then that the poor needs the kingdom preached to them. So the poor doesn't need money. <laughs> See, if, if, if you give the poor money, he's going to use it to, to sustain his poverty. Whatever made him poor, he keep doing So if you give a poor man money, you gotta ask him first, how you got poor in the first place? Because there's something you're doing keeping you poor. Yes, yes. And obviously you've been, you, you look a little fat, and you look well, but you're poor. Yes. You're on this corner, and you got enough strength to stand up, so you must be eating for a few years. What, <laughs> in other words, this ain't the first set of money you're getting. So tell me what you did with all the money you've been begging for the last 20 years. Because obviously you had enough money to look this well. Which means money is not your need. So we keep giving these poor people on the street money. Christ says no. He says the poor needs the gospel of the kingdom preached to them. Uh, the, for Luke chapter 4, man, read it again. His, his inaugural address in that synagogue. The spirit of God is upon me. For he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he says. The poor needs the good news of the kingdom. Why? Because the kingdom, if you get the keys, it'll make you rich. This rich man thought he was rich. The Bible says, uh, what does it profit a man to have wealth and frustration? But it says, uh, the blessing of the Lord maketh you rich and it adds no sorrow. God wants you rich and also have a good time. Some people are rich, but they're watching to make sure the police don't come. <laughs> that ain't richness. That sounds like problems. <laughs> you know, you sell enough drugs. Sure, you got a nice car, but you hope you never get caught. So that car ain't safe, nor you. Hello? Yeah, you selling your little thing and doing your little number and little thing. You hoping you don't get caught. That ain't no riches. That's risk. <laughs> Man, praise the Lord for me for a close. He said, look. Jesus, look, the poor need the right 
kind of response. They need the kingdom. If you get the kingdom, then the system works. And the kingdom of God makes you rich. That's no sorrow to it. So he gives you the ability to get wealth the right way. Next one here. The danger of the fallen nature of human reasoning. That's what makes it harder for a rich man to live in the kingdom. See, the reasoning of the rich man was you do these certain things and you get rich. Okay? You climb the corporate ladder. You walk on top of people's heads. You hurt people on the way up. You, 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 you get over on people, you scheme, you, whatever you do, you, you got to get this million dollars before you're 40. You got to be a millionaire before you're 40. So you do your little you know, thing under the table here and you take a little kick back here and you do a little lie here and you, you know, filter some money off on the top here. And you, all this stuff, you're getting money. See, but you, you're doing it the, the world's kingdom way. And now you come to Jesus with your money. And you walk in the kingdom. You say, I want to live in the kingdom. He says, okay, take all the money, you thief. And give it back to all those people out there. My God, now Jesus, you must be really high. <laughs> What's wrong? The fallen nature of human reasoning. The kingdom of God is completely opposite to what you've been trained to think. That's why the first word is repent. Change the way you think. So to live in the kingdom of God, and the reason why I'm telling you this is because the keys I'm going to teach you later on are going to be keys that are going to blow your mind, but they open heaven. And most of them don't make any sense. I mean, could you imagine? Okay, right now we got President Bush trying to figure out how to find terrorists hidden right in America. Okay? Now, let's be honest now. That's going to be a little tough. Okay. Now, if that was Joshua, <laughs> President Joshua, go say, Joshua, get the choir. <laughs> yeah, 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 get it. That's crazy. Get the choir and march around Washington seven times and sing. What? I go into Camp David. We're going to have, no, no, don't go to Camp David. Go to Camp Kingdom. Take that choir. <laughs> Now, keep in mind, Joshua is a military man. He is a leader of a country. God says, get the choir. Get the choir. Why? Listen, you can't destroy Jericho. Okay? And then walls are so thick, you can't even get up the walls. So I'll tell you what to do. You need heaven to interfere with earth. But the problem is, heaven locked up right now. <sighs> So what you got to do, Joshua, is to get heaven to loose some angels. But you see, heaven can't open if you don't start praising me. Because when you, I dwell in the, man, listen here. He said, Joshua, there's a key. Now, Joshua, listen, go out to tell Joshua about the key. What I can't figure out is we are post-Joshua. This is heavy. In other words, God ain't got to come and give you the same instructions. You already saw the key, but you ain't using it. Some of you are concerned about your job this week. God said, look, just sing. But now singing, the, oh, now Pastor Miles, that is unreasonable. God said, look, sing. <laughs> See, in that kingdom, you fret. But in this kingdom, you sing. Now, which one do you want to do? You could go in that one and fret and get high blood pressure or come in this one and sing. Let heaven open up. Angels come and the heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord. They'll fire everybody except you and can't explain why. That's kingdom living. Glory, hallelujah. But if you compete with the other employees, you're in trouble. Don't compete with them. Start singing. You got a key they can't handle. And guess what? The key is a little secret to them. See? Because they think you're crazy. I mean, here you are in the bathroom at work. Say, oh, brother Fox gone crazy. Now, you know? <laughs> see, now he's so scared he loses the job. He's gone talking foolishness now. See? <laughs> and they think it's fair got you singing. Mm -mm. It's the key that got you singing. Praise the Lord. 
Come on, clap your hands, somebody. It's the key. It's the key. Man, I want to challenge you. People like Brother Anthony and others who got your own business. Man, just do a little change. Shift a little, shift a little bit, you know, in the crisis. Just say, look, this morning uh, in, in the boardroom, if you want to come, I'm going to spend 10 minutes. We're going to do a little thing. Just change a little order a little bit. 10 minutes. You can come to my office. Uh, those of you who wish to come, you're going to put no pressure on nobody. The Bible says, well, well, only two of you gather. Only two. You need one more. And just sing a little bit. Let the staff sing. And you guys, you, know, you and Claudia, that's two. That's enough. Just start singing, brother. Say, so we're going to spend a few minutes. We're going to sing in this office from now on today. Praise God. Why? We're going to open up heaven over this office. So that folks will fly in from Canada with money to invest and they can't explain why. Let me tell you something. God don't need no Bahamian to buy no property, brother. You start singing, you real estate agents, God will send people from Tubabu. You're laughing, and they'll come with bags of money in hard times looking for property in the Bahamas, and you sit there, and the biggest deal is in the midst of crisis. Y'all yeah. don't believe God. That's your problem. You believe God, you shout hallelujah, somebody. God, the keys are unreasonable. When you study all the keys, I'm telling you, they blow my mind. God said, Moses, there's soldiers and there's water. And I told you to go to the land behind the water. Moses said, yeah, water and soldiers. Water and soldiers. Moses said, let's see. We could fight. And it's more of them than us. Plus, we never fight because we were slaves. We didn't know how to hold sword. And over there is water. And we live in desert. We can't swim. <laughs> God said, there's, there's, there's another way to get out of this, you know. What do you have in your hand? Moses said, now, wait a minute. I got a licked and whitey piece of stick. God said, that's enough. God said, God said well, I'm going to show you something. You ever seen stick open water before? Nope. He said, in this kingdom, it ain't the stick, you know. <laughs> it's the faith. <laughs> if you just do so and say, open. How many of you tried that this week? You need to try that this week, man. You need to stand in front of your business and say, <laughs> say something to the business. Heaven is locked up. It's waiting on you to do something. Heaven saying, look, do something. Tell your neighbor, do something. Man, you got to do something. You got to give God something to lose. Man, you can lock some stuff up, honey. Just lock it up. Say, man, this will go no further. Stop. Heaven say, thank you. Stop. Heaven will lock it up. But the keys are given to those who want to know it. And that's why I'm glad you're here. Every single week, your hunger will attract the keys. God will show you stuff because you want to see it. To other people, it's parables. They, they, they ain't going to be interested. Don't worry about them. The more you want to know, the more God's going to show you. Next one. Principles work, but are not always understood. And that's important. When the keys work, you don't always understand how. <laughs> God said, Joshua, you're surrounded. Joshua said, yeah, we can get killed tonight. God said, tell you what to do. Uh, they got swords and spears, no problem. I want you to tell all the men to get a jug. <laughs> Joshua said, well, what? I ain't never hear, but no one fighting with no jug except Bahamians. <laughs> Coke shell and thing. He said, I want you to get a jug. And then he says, tell them to get a stick and put a fire on the other end of it. Mine, this is supposed to be military fighting. Them fellas got swords and spears and daggers and shields. God said, get a drinking jug and a piece of wood. Joshua. Everybody say, Joshua. See, you got to be crazy like Joshua, man. Because the kingdom is not of this world. The, God may tell you some things in the next few weeks as you learn this thing. He's going to tell you some instructions that are going to sound so crazy, you better don't tell your friends. <laughs> Just do it. 
Just do it. God may tell you, give your car away. And you go, I bind you, devil. <laughs> and God say, I'm not the devil. This is me. Why? God's trying to release something to you, but this car is holding it up. See, God may say, bake a cake for so and so now. And they come to your mind, you go, I'll do it. God said, no, not later. Bake the cake for her now. Tell you strange things. And John said, Joshua, take the fire. Now, I don't understand this, okay? Because those of you who took physics know that if you put fire in a jug, it's supposed to go out because oxygen, okay? God said, take the fire and the jug, take it out, and I want you to surround the enemy. Just scatter out, less than you, so scatter out far so they think it's plenty. He said, then I want you to, to, when I shout, I want everybody to light the fire, cover it with a jug. He says, and then when I shout again, I want you to take the fire out and hit the jug together. Bang! Now this dark at night. <laughs> and there ain't no street lights in them days. It's black night. And the enemy sleeping. And only a few of them, a few of Joshua, those guys, and they're around there, enemy sleeping. All of a sudden, enemy here. Bang! When they open up, they see fire everywhere. The Bible says they pull out them swords and kill one another. <laughs> kill themselves. And it says that in the morning, Joshua and his men walked among them, picking up the wallet, <laughs> rings. The Bible says it. All the money, all the jewelry, just walked through the dead, pick up everything. And they, the, the, the horse was loading down with all the stuff. <laughs> tell your neighbor, we even ain't got a fight. Come on, just tell them, we even ain't got a fight. Praise the Lord. See, half of the things you're worrying about, the kingdom got some keys. Blow you away. Matter of fact, why don't you use the next few weeks just to experiment? Just, just, let's, let's just see how God going to take care of us. Come on, let's just make it, let's make a deal, okay? Let's just see. And then I want everybody to kind of watch for your testimony because we want to hear them. Okay, just, let's just see what God's going to do. God's going to take care of you in a strange set of ways. It's not always understood. Always understood. Pay taxes. Only one way to pay taxes. You need money. God say, go fishing. You, know, you can't pay taxes to go fish. And the first fish you get, that's all we need. Now, fishermen know that you need plenty of fish to pay taxes. Christ said, you only need one in this case. Why? Because the way the kingdom works is always, not always understood. The way God's going to bless you, you don't worry about a thing. That job in Atlantis is not the job that God has for you. God working on one job bigger than that job. That's, a, that, that, that's just a way for you to keep yourself busy. God's going to meet every kingdom citizen's needs according to his riches. Where? In heaven. It's not based on what's on earth. The key is to get heaven open is the challenge. This last one here. Principles are established by the manufacturer. And that's why the rich man had a problem. See, the creator knows his creation. He knows it. He knows how it works. He knows it better than you. God knows that the birds can understand him. But you don't think the birds could. That's heavy. So Elijah is hungry in the cave. Elijah figured, I need a human to bring me food. God said, wait a minute. I created the birds. I can make birds bring cakes every morning for days on time doc I mean this is deep <laughs> I mean suppose some pigeon show up on your porch in the morning with money in its mouth <laughs> I know it's all funny doesn't it God did it already he knows his creation he knows them. How did Jesus know that money was in that fish mouth? All that fish in the ocean. Because he knows, he knows where everything is. He knows what it's doing. But this is a fun kingdom, man. That means the entire earth 
is at the disposal of your government. It can use it any way it wants to use the creation. Man, say amen. That's deep to me. That's heavy. That's heavy. Steel is heavy. When you put steel in water, what happens? It sinks. So the man was chopping wood. This is the thing. Elijah happened to be in down that day. And the man asked break and fell into the brook. And he, Elijah came by the river. See the man there crying. <laughs> Get a stick. <laughs> Elijah said, what's your problem? The man said, man said, look, I'm a laborer. That's how I make my living. And my axe broke and it's in the brook. Elijah says, oh, really? He says, okay. He said, I want you to go and get, in the, get a certain type of tree and break it and bring it for me. The fellow got a little twig, came back, the stick. Elijah looked to the heaven. He unlocked something. And he put the stick in the water, you know, he put it in the water. And the axe floated from the bottom on top and floated right to shore. Now tell me he ain't in charge of his creation. If he can make steel float, he can take care of your little mortgage. But you gotta unlock. You gotta unlock. I want you to leave this meeting tonight knowing that God who called you is able to keep you. But you've gotta want to know the keys. How many of you want to know the keys? My prayer is that you will become so proficient with your keys that for the rest of your life, you will never have a down day. It will be a fun day. Every day you wake up, you say, let me try some keys today, some new ones. Let me see how they work. And a matter of fact, I tell you that you will be the miserable element to Satan. He'll hate your guts because nothing he throws at you will work because you know the keys to open heaven. I suggest to you, friends, that everything, what you want to do? Oh, you want to give me something? You, oh, you want to start a key? Oh, she's a smart woman. Father, give her the prophet's blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I think that if we get this message, you ought to make Jesus happy. Because heaven is full of stuff that's overdue. The warehouses in heaven are rotting with stuff that people won't get. Because they don't know how to get him out. I pray that there is a report in heaven beginning this year which says there's a group in the Bahamas. You know, when the angel report to God, says, the group in the Bahamas, they cleaning up. Anybody want to clean up heaven? <laughs> Clap your hands, praise the Lord. God bless you. I'm going to stop right there. We can pick up here next time. Thank you for your time. Thank you once again for listening to this message as we hope that it has been a blessing to you. Our goal is to show you new paths and opportunities so that you can discover your purpose. It is your love, support, and partnership that makes Monroe Global possible. Please visit us online at www.monroeglobal.com for more product, partnership, or to join us at one of our live events around the world.